What's good, people? Thank you, as always, for passing by the channel. Much appreciated. The background has changed. The green chair has gone. Um, I finally made my way to South Africa. Um, long ass journey. I can't lie to you. Long ass journey, but we're here. We're here. We're safe and sound, which is good. So um, happy to be here. A month here. So you will probably be seeing this background a lot more often. Um, and then we'll get back to the green chair sometime by the end of Feb, where we'll do another Q and A. Um, right. I'm holding my mic. I don't know how, but I've managed to break my mic um, by putting it in my hand luggage. Don't know how, so I need to get this fixed and sorted because this is ridiculous, right? It's better than having no mic, but this is fucking stupid. Um, before we talk about this video, how sad is that situation with that Cardiff footballer? Um, in this day and age, 2019, someone needs to sit down and explain to me how a fucking plane goes missing. I need to understand how a plane goes missing. And not only do I need to understand how a plane goes missing in this day and age, I need to understand how a plane goes missing for what was an hour flight, right? I mean, how far is it from France to, I don't know if he was going to Heathrow and then going to another or from France directly to Wales. How far is that journey? How far is that journey? And I just read on Sky Sports News, and sorry to bring this up on a boxing channel, but I just read on Sky Sports News that um, Guernsey, whatever, uh, have called off the search or suspended it. I mean, fuck, imagine, imagine how his parents are feeling or other people that are on board that plane or everything. It's just so sad. But anyway, moving on from that. I don't know why, but maybe because I heard about the story just as I boarded and it just kind of affected me as thinking, shit, I'm stepping on this plane. It could be the last time. It just got me a bit. So that's why I said at the start, I'm very happy just to be here right now. Um, but let's talk about Dillian White. Let's talk about Dillian White and, and this offer, right? Um, I kid you not, I actually done a video, which I'm happy I didn't post, um, talking about Dylan White's offer being about 10 million. How far out was I, right? How far out was I? Which I guess goes to show that we don't really know what we think we know. Um, you hear it with Eddie Hearn a lot and he talks about going on social media and Twitter and even watching some YouTube videos and thinking, what are they talking about? So sometimes it does make me feel like we semi-experts that think we know stuff don't actually know anything don't actually know anything but what we do know is that Eddie Hearn has kind of confirmed that he's made um, Dylan White a four million pound offer what we don't know if it's a four million pound basic in terms of this is just your basic and judging by what the pay-per-view does you could get a bit more maybe another 500,000 maybe another million or it's just four million we, we don't know that but we do know the offer is around four million he has come out and said it's four million plus so anything between four and five, let's just say four and a half million for argument's sake. Straight off the bat, I have to be honest with you, look, don't get me wrong, four million is great money, but I was shocked, I thought it was a bit more. I don't know why. Um, four million is not chicken change by any stretch of the imagination, especially when you think of someone like Deontay Wilder, who fought Luis Ortiz defending his WBC belt and he got paid, probably got a bit more under the table, but in terms of what we know he got paid, $2.1 million dollars. And that's what, 1.5 million pounds. So Dylan White, not a champion, not unbeaten, fighting a guy that already knocked him out. Four million, I guess, is good. I just thought it might be more. I guess it's because of the numbers we're hearing when we link Joshua with Wild or Fury. Everything seems to be a lot bigger. 20, 30, we've heard 50 million. So when you hear four million, it does sound quite low. Not saying it's not a great offer for him, but it does sound low when you think of a big blockbuster Joshua fight at Wembley. Um, I did... Remember hearing that Joseph Park got something like 5 million. Again, it could be wrong because no one's confirmed this and it could be just Twitter or social media talk. If that's the case, then 4 million for Dylan White does make complete sense, right? Joseph Park was an unbeaten world champion that bring an unbeaten record and a belt to the table. Dylan White doesn't bring any of those. What he does bring is confidence, hype, and he will sell the fight. Um, so he brings those things. But again, those things are just, they're not, Things you can tick off, right? You can tick off an unbeaten record. You can tick off, at the time, a WBO belt. Was it? Yeah, WBO belt. You can't do that with Dillian White. So what do you guys think about 4 million? Is that enough? Should he be getting more? Having thought about it for the best part of um, an 11-hour plane ride, <laughs> I think it's interesting. And, and the reason I think it's interesting is because we don't normally hear that. What we hear nowadays is split, split, split. We always hear that, oh, 70, 30, 80, 20, 60, 40. And I'm trying to work out what that split would be. Um, 
Or maybe, again, we've exaggerated what we think Joshua gets, right? Everyone seems to think that Joshua gets paid 30, 40 million. I, I don't think he gets that. I think Joshua gets around 15 to 20. So if that's the case, what is it? A 70, 30 split, 80, 20 split? My maths aren't great. I can't lie to you. Um, I think that's fair. I think anything like a 75, 25 split for a voluntary. Remember, this is a voluntary. I think is fair. If it was a mandatory, it would be 80, 20, 75, 25. So I think a voluntary, he should be happy with it. He should be happy with that. And fingers crossed for himself that he takes it. Because you don't take these opportunities. You don't know when the next one's coming. I think people seem to assume or maybe think that Dylan White will get another shot. He'll fight Dominic Brazil and then it'll be mandatory to fight Deontay Wilder. You never know what could happen in boxing. You take the opportunities when they come and it's a big one. Um, you're talking 4 million. I think it will be a basic of 4 million. You're talking 90,000 at Wembley. The chance to fight at Wembley Stadium. He would never, ever, ever have dreamed about this um, growing up being a boxer or a kickboxer at the time. He would never have thought about this. Number one, because Wembley wasn't the norm for boxers to go and fight at. Yeah, there's been fights there before. Frank Bruno had fights there before. Carl Froch had fights. But it's not your go-to venue, is it? It's not your his go-to venue is the O2 Arena. So you've got a chance at Wembley Stadium. Um, if it's Joshua versus Dylan White, I think it's fair to say it will probably do 75, 80,000. You've got a chance to get revenge over the guy that knocked you out cold. And it was a knockout cold. Um, it's almost one all between these two if you bring in the amateur record, right? Dylan White beat Joshua in the amateurs. And most importantly, and I think this is what I think Dylan White fans and Dylan White's getting away from, um, which I think is the most important thing here. You get a chance to be world champion. Right, you get a chance to be world champion. There have been many fighters, thousands, hundreds of thousands of fighters that have fought for world titles that probably haven't earned five figures. Probably haven't earned five figures. I think Lamont Peterson said it. I'm trying to remember. Um, I don't know if it was after the calm fight, before the calm fight. I think it was after the calm fight when he won the belt. And he mentioned something along the lines of him getting 50,000 for his next fight. Dillian White has the chance to tick every single box here every single boxer dreaming growing up wants to fight for a world title you want to fight in front of many fans you can and you want to get paid didn't white ticks all those the cherry on top is that it's anthony joshua not because joshua generates mega pay-per-view so you could get a bit more cream on top but joshua because that's the guy you really want to fight if you put all three guys and he has his top three fury wilder and joshua in front of him Joshua is the one he wants, right? Even if Joshua had one belt and switched it the other way around and Deontay Wilder had three or four, he still wants Joshua. He gets the chance to get Joshua. He would be a fool, a fool to let this slide and to then go on and fight Dominic Brazil for another final eliminator. He needs to take this opportunity and make this fight happen. If he's that confident about beating Joshua, then almost like what I said in that Highlander, um, analogy. You chop Joshua's head off, you take all his power, and then Dillian White becomes the man. And then, if there is a rematch clause put in, it's a 50 50 fight in terms of money. And then you make your big bucks. And even if it's not Joshua, you make your big bucks fighting anywhere else because you then become the star. You then become the star. So for me, he takes the fight. Um, but it'll be interesting to see what happens because we are getting close. April 13th isn't that far away. For a fight of this magnitude, you really want to start camp. I say mid-Feb, I think you want to give yourself a seven to eight week camp. So we do need an announcement in the next couple of weeks, right? Um, and so will Jarrell Miller. Jarrell Miller will be sitting down thinking, I need to know what I'm doing as well. So um, I think the favorite is Dylan White. The bookies have him as a favorite, but let's see if Dylan White accepts the offer. What do you guys think? Should he take it or not? Simple answer, yes or no.